Hole one at Muni. What's up, everybody? This is a practice round. We are in Mobile, Alabama at Langham Municipal Park, AKA Muni. We are going right over here while my focus is going all bonkers, right over here. Uh, we're gonna start off with 234 feet. Pretty straightforward throw. Uh, I'm gonna take a Plasma Nomad, try to take it somewhere over these few bushes right in this area and just kind of come in there nice and gently. That's a great way to start this round off. Old Plasma Nomad. Great way to start the day off. You can take a look back where we came from. Just a small little hyzer into here. Plasma Nomad. Let's go to hole two. Hole two is 254. Baskets right over there. We are gonna throw the same nomad again usually there's a lot of wind coming off this water over here you'll see in the next couple holes but uh let's go with the nomad again Looks good. I can't tell if it's deep or not, but it looks good. Okay, so we definitely did not go deep on this row. It's really weird. Uh, this hole is usually really windy, so throwing uh, a straight stable putter, usually it's an overstable mid or an approach disc, so we'll see how it goes in the round. Okay, A-hole. A-hole is 352 feet. Um, you got a water carry if you go sidearm. So water comes down this whole left-hand side. Uh, there's water behind the basket. Uh, this road over here to your right where you can see the signs. It all plays OB. I'm actually gonna try to throw it probably at that parking sign right there uh, with my plasma Tesla and have it come back. Though, this sign I don't remember being there. And that sign's kinda in my ideal hyzer spot hmm we might have to come up with something else maybe we'll step up there and take a look and wait for this car to go by and uh give it a grip we're gonna go with the uh plasma tesla and yes yes i am afraid to throw my reactor straight at it or my nomad straight at it because i like those discs and i know for a fact if you go in that water you're not getting them back That sign wasn't here the last time because that's right in my line. I think we're putting. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're putting. I caught the just just the lower branches of that last tree. Um, I tell you what. bad uh gave it a good bid with the water behind it just come up a tad bit short on the putt just like that much from falling in i'll take a three on a hole hole three it is 230 feet uh the the basket is uh right behind the bush pretty much center frame uh, the big hyzer like the the hyzer is there up the right side over the pink bushes there or even a little bit straight at it um i never go that way even though i pretty feel pretty confident throwing putters uh, i always throw the sidearm out over the water and 
the reason I do that is because if you land anywhere, let's say 10 foot short of the basket, it actually has a chance to like skip off the backside into the water. So I'm gonna play the sidearm. It's 2.30. I think I'm gonna take a fireball out there and just kind of crash it in and control the distance with the fireball. You see, I can take an overstable fairway like the fireball and just throw it right at this tree on the left. And I know that the stability that this should cut in and the angle of which the disc is coming in the basket in my head stops it from any chance of really going in the water. The only thing I can do is either short it into the first tree or power too much through it and hit the far tree. Either way, that would be a three. Uh, I think on that shot, the worst thing I'm doing is taking a three. And more than times than not, I'm taking a nice, easy two. So looking back at the T-pad, you can see I'm coming through this window here. Uh, you could come through this window, but you see all the pine straw, the hard packed ground, and then it slopes off right into the water. So if you land your putter back here, you're looking at this putt, which you should make, but if you don't, you're probably gonna go in the water because it's hard packed ground and it's never not this windy, but I'll take the sidearm, a little tap in birdie. That's what I'm thinking, as long as I can make this putt. Put you there, and go make a putt. All right, hole four. We're looking at 265 to the short pin where the pin is now. Off to the left, you can see the white stake. That is the long pin. Um, if we're going to the long pin, I'm going to throw the same, I'm going to throw the plasma nomad instead of these electron soft nomad because I just wanted the hyzer out instead of stay straight. So we're just going to take the normal nomad and throw it straight at it. Woo. It's beautiful out here today. It's actually not a bad shot for both of them. I kind of laid off of it a little bit. Um, it still should be inside circle putt though. But that's basically it. I just want to give it down there and have no left hand finish. Left hand finish means we're going to the other pin. We don't want that. So that was pretty, uh, well, a little longer putt than I wanted, but you can see if I turn to my left, here's the alternate pin. Uh, and this, this gets a little sketchy. You really want to land back here um, behind this tree and then have a putt back at it or short, but it's tough to land short because it's a downhill slope and all the roots, but I'll take the birdie on a decent putt up the hill. Let's go on to next. So I didn't talk about it off the tee, but this hole, it looks like off the tee bed that you want to throw like a, a overstable fairway or very overstable shot. But the line is actually inside here and you're trying to throw almost like a hyzer flip up or something really slow. Uh, I, I threw the reactor, it's not very slow, but it's beat up to where I know it's not gonna like really uh, be aggressive on the flare. Cause again, hard pack ground, heading downhill towards the basket. We're just looking to come in nice and soft somewhere up here by this tree and usually it funnels down towards the basket so another executed hole hole six par four 
528 feet in that long position way down there. Um, I could probably get a roller down to jump putt range, but really it's a par four and we're looking for birdies. So I just want to throw something nice, nice and smooth, uh, not try to go for too much distance, try to cut this hole in half. I'm really trying to get comfortable throwing the entropy on a little bit longer sidearms. It's not that long, it's probably maybe 200 feet, but I start going up to mids and fairways here where I know this disc can handle the torque of a sidearm. I just, I don't have trust, 100% uh, trust in it. Um, I threw other approaches just like this from other places, but I've never really given this a full sidearm, like really getting into it. So that's something I'm working on on this round. Uh, this is gonna be a perfect, perfect chance to see what I can do with it. Debating if I need to do a run up or a standstill. that so that was that was absolutely perfect um from there normally i would probably go with like a deflector or a pyro and either go too deep or too far right i need to really lean on an entropy it's what it's there for it's what it's made for it this this is the shot right there Okay, you're up on my cart, so you're running away from me. <laughs> Hole seven, 289. Uh, normally, everybody takes a big hyzer out over to the right. Uh, there's a couple sidearms. Sidearms tend to either get caught up by the tree on the left or the roots on the ground under the tree. And I normally throw a putter straight at it. But I'm gonna trust this for a little, little right to left wind. I'm just gonna throw something just something out there and let it come in. I don't know what. I want to throw, so I'm basically going to throw like a three, maybe 320 up in the air. And let it, maybe I'm going to go with my Proton Tesla. I could probably go Pyro, Deflector, Nomad, Reactor. I could probably go with a lot of those, but I don't want to throw really hard. I just want to throw a nice smooth shot. Putting. We're putting probably close to circle's edge in a headwind putt. This is why I normally go uh, straight at it. I am not very comfortable throwing a hyzer on this hole. This bush to the right is in front of the basket, but for some reason it just it gets in my head. So we're going to try uh, a putter straight at it just to see. You got to force it over just a little bit and just kind of throw it straight. pretty close to the same spot. So they're both pretty close, uh, pretty close to ideal. This bush definitely has grown. This bush next to the basket has definitely grown. 
uh, a lot. So that window coming in on the hyzer is even tighter than I thought. I think I'm just going to stick with the putter play. The putter play for me is what's most comfortable. And you got to play your strengths. My strength is throwing a putter straight. scared of the wind. Windy. It's really not even that windy. It's in my head. This is another reason I struggle on this course is I'm feeling this wind. It's not even, it's like barely even blowing, but in my mind, in the open, um, my mind gets lost around the whole basket and I just, uh, head case. Yeah, we made the putt. We made the putt and now we're over to hole eight. The par four that is, it's kind of grown up a little bit on these big old pines. Uh, the branches I see have grown up a little bit. Uh, you got a few different gaps to choose from. It's 660 and it is playing into a slight headwind. I think I'm gonna go with my plasma octane. I'm gonna go right, uh, left of the first tree. No, I'm gonna go right of the first tree. I'm just gonna try to punch straight at it to the right of these three trees. So down this right gap is ideal. James Conrad, t -pad. what I wanted to do. Um, through the octane, let it come up around those three trees, have a wide open upshot. Yeah, we're playing good golf today, boys. We executed that shot pretty well. Left itself a wide open upshot. About 230 left to the, to the basket. I want to get deep of the basket because there is a headwind coming through. I kind of want to go entropy. I'm going to trust it. We're going to go entropy. I'm going to trust it. I'm going to throw it out to the right. Uh, try to keep it flat-ish. And let the stability of the disc take it over there. Throw it flat. I keep, I keep hyzer in that disc. I don't, I can't like get myself to trust it flat. I don't know why. I don't know if it, cause it looks like my Nomad, but I always, I always hyzer it. I don't know why. Now yeah. it's gotta be. We never ever should be this far out on that kind of an upshot. Um, that's, this kind of strokes like that, I'm losing strokes to the whole field throwing shots like that. So we got away with one there. It almost cost me a bogey because I just totally mental lapsed the wind. Uh, can't do be doing that. The wind feels like it's changed. Uh, this, this, this is hole nine, 398. 
it's just a hyzer uh, out towards the parking lot and have it swing back. So you're really throwing like 450, somewhere between 430 and 450, somewhere in that area to get to the basket. Uh, these next three holes are usually where I lose three strokes to the top guys because they can all throw these 450 hyzers pretty simple. Uh, I struggle. So we're going to give it a go. I got my octane again. I can't tell if the wind's kind of feeling like it's going up tailwind, but I know out there it was a headwind. So I'm wondering if it's just swirling here and it's a headwind once I get out there. Guess we're gonna find out. I got the dead skip. I was fully expecting a full skip there. I got no skip whatsoever, it just died. Go with another octane. This will play a little higher, a little inside. Okay, that's actually inside the circle. I've never been able to really do that at all. Gray octane, pre-flight number octane for the win. So the gray octane is in the circle, probably about 25. Now that I'm down here, it was tailwind the whole way. So gray octane was the right call. Um, the plasma octane shell tick more stable and I thought it was gonna be a little headwind when I got down here. So it is what it is. Layer two, baby. Player two is amazing.